GDP slumps, the Fed creeps closer to a rate cut, but as they say, the devil's in the details. We dove into those details, analyzing the data and tables to make sense of exactly what the gross domestic product report today said. It's not enough to know GDP was revised down to 3.2 from the prior 3.3% estimate. We're going to show you exactly what part of the economy seems to be working and exactly why the GDP was revised lower. Also, as a result of the report, the odds of an interest rate cut in May rose from 16 to 22%. Based on the shift in the futures market, we're going to show you how this change uh, could affect the Fed's path. If you're thinking about buying or selling a house, the GDP report also could equally affect mortgage rates. So let's dive into the details. Today, the Bureau of Economic Analysis reported the prior 3.3 estimate was revised lower to a current 3.2. While this does represent a decline from the prior quarter's 4.9%, a 3.2% reading is still considered by most to be adequate. So what changed today? Well, the good news, significant increases in consumer spending. Also, increases in non-residential fixed income. That's multifamily residential structures and hotels. In terms of the consumer spending, we can consider the advanced retail sales. Here we see retail trade on a year-over-year -year basis seems to be moving to the upside. In fact, the latest result was a 4% year-over-year increase. It certainly is working. Also, non-residential fixed income, that's also working. That's multifamily residential structures and hotels. So for this, we could consider total construction spending in the non-residential uh, field year over year also rising to the upside. In fact, the latest result is around 20%, and that only is surpassed by a couple months ago. We saw a 23% year over year increase. But here's the bad news in the GDP report. Decreases in private inventory investments. Now we're going to see a number of charts all reflecting inventories. This shows us the volume of goods that are put on the shelves. There has been a significant decrease in that volume. So we see durable goods. Those are those products that are meant to last more than three years, like appliances and washing machines. And we can see now only up 1% year over year, a significant decline from the 19% reading just a couple years ago. Motor vehicles and parts inventories on a year-over-year -year basis also declining, falling from levels of 25% to a current 11%. Apparel inventories on a year-over-year -year basis was at 47% and is now at a negative 23%. So we see overall a significant decrease in the amount of investment to keep those goods on the shelves. Also, machinery, equipment, and supplies year over year from 29% down to a current 14. Now, in terms of the Fed funds futures, the green line shows us the chance that the Federal Reserve will cut rates. Uh, the red line shows us no change. Now, we can see we have a current 3% chance the Federal Reserve will cut rates in March. They're not cutting rates in March. We move to the May meeting. It was 16% prior to today's GDP number. Now is 22%. So we see now a 22% chance the Fed will cut rates. It's still below the 50% chance. Amazing that we're now not even talking about a Fed cut uh, in May, but the odds have improved based on the weakness. So the takeaway from this is that those inventories are actually really important. We see our first uh, probability above 50% in June. The June meeting shows us a 61% chance the Federal Reserve will cut rates. And then the July meeting, we have an 84% chance. So certainly as we move further out into the year, the odds of a rate cut increase. But the fact of the matter is today's weakness uh, really shows us that the Fed could be on a path a little bit more likely to uh, to cut rates, but still in May, probably not going to happen. What are we watching next? Really big inflation numbers, a PCE, personal consumption expenditure, expected at 2.4%, core PCE, 2.8%. Uh, so certainly 
Remember that it's a price factor as well. It's not just growth. We see here growth is slowing, and that has moved the Fed a little bit closer to raising rates. Now we have to see uh, the next report, the price component, the inflationary repo uh, component. If we see inflation continue to move down, well, then maybe the Fed uh, you know, will be more likely uh, to cut rates. Uh, conversely, if we see hot inflation, the Fed's going to want to keep rates higher for a longer period of time. And we've seen overall on a year-over-year -year basis, the PCE, personal consumption and expenditure, has uh, really experienced a steady decline to the downside. What does this translate into this, in terms of the stock market? The stock market likes lower inflation, so we want to see a lower number. But we saw weakness today in the stock market as a result of a decline in growth. You see, the stock market wants good growth and low inflation. Today, we got not so good growth. A large part of that are the inventories. Uh, so let's see tomorrow. Uh, for positive stock prices, we certainly want to see a decline in inflation. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.